Produced in high definition by Fox 50. Viewer discretion is advised. A mass killer, a leader of a drug cartel, and a robber who forces a clerk to strip down. NC Wanted in high definition starts now. Good evening, I'm Gerald Owens. Welcome to NC Wanted. Tonight we bring you our next round of fugitives running from authorities in North Carolina. It's time to put these guys away, but we need your help. This Target 20 fugitive is from the Lincoln Heights area in Halifax County, accused of shooting and killing a man in his community. We're talking about 28-year-old Henry Artez Richardson. Authorities say he and his victim had a difference of opinion and that Henry Richardson decided to settle the matter with his gun. Oh, it's May 27, 2007, oh, man. around 3.30 in the afternoon. Henry Artez Richardson and Charlie Pierce are in front of a small convenience store in Roanoke Rapids. No, no, no. Take the baby. Neither are directly involved in a custody battle that's going on between two families in the Lincoln Heights community. But their differing opinions stir emotion and send tempers flaring. They exchange callous words with each other but are soon broken up by people standing around the convenience store. Richardson leaves the scene. Pierce walks across Stephen Street where a group of people are playing cards outside a house. Play the game, man. Y'all got jokers. Oh, that's, that's, too. that's the right one right there. Right there for the right, 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 right. Eyewitnesses say after some time passes, Richardson appears out of nowhere and rounds the corner of the house. He approaches the card table making profane remarks at Pierce, then starts firing. Everyone at the card table runs, but Pierce never gets the chance. He's hit twice, once in the chest, once in the stomach. With gun in hand, Richardson crosses the street, running through the Mini Mart parking lot, and disappears between some houses behind the store. This is the last time anyone reportedly sees him in the area. Holding on to his last breath, Pierce manages to get up in hopes of heading back to his house. He makes it only 50 yards before he collapses and dies in a ditch. Yeah, we got an emergency over here. Yeah, please send an ambulance. Authorities say minutes after arriving on the scene, they were called away to a fire at an abandoned house. The arson investigation is still pending, and they say it's possible Richardson could have torched the house to create a diversion. Investigators say Henry Richardson must be considered armed and dangerous. There's a reward for information leading to his arrest. Richardson is described as 5'10", weighing about 180 pounds. Investigators say it's possible he could be in the Raleigh-Durham area, but most of his family lives in Halifax and Northampton counties. Richardson is known to go by the names Tez and Henrock. He has tattoos on both arms. On his right arm, a tattoo of a cross and gravestones. On his left, the word Silas and the letters ROC, along with a picture of a pit bull. His hairstyles vary, so he could be sporting dreadlocks or may have cut his hair short. If you have any information about Henry Artez Richardson, call us toll free at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. Your identity can remain confidential. Some of the most sought after criminals are drug dealers who traffic millions of dollars worth of illegal drugs every day. For months, 14 federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies in North Carolina joined forces to bring down a Mexican-based drug ring with a faction in the Goldsboro-Wayne County area. In June of 2004, the plan was to take down the main players, including suspected drug trafficker Alex Soto. They called it Operation Gold Rush. 
It's the summer of 2004. After months of phone taps and continuous surveillance, investigators discover a Mexican-based drug cartel operating smaller cells in Goldsboro and Mount Olive, North Carolina. They link 25-year-olds Alex Soto and Arnulfo Ramirez to the group. The two men work with a lawyer in Mexico named Alfredo Granados Garcia. He provides them with several kilos of cocaine and marijuana. Garcia coordinates with Soto and Ramirez to have a driver bring an average of 8 to 10 kilos of narcotics into the country on a regular basis, each worth about $20,000 and carefully transported in vehicles with hidden compartments to throw off border guards. Soto and Ramirez in turn distribute the supply to interested clients. Authorities discover that a trailer belonging to Ramirez's father off Zion Church Road in Goldsboro is a stash for the drugs and the location for much of the drug activity. After intercepting communication and even witnessing deals made to third parties, authorities gather enough evidence to get arrest warrants for Garcia, Soto and Ramirez. Then on June 10, 2004, they decide to make their move. While staking out the grounds around the trailer, they wait for Soto and Ramirez to come outside. When both men leave the trailer and get into a car, investigators follow close behind. Shortly after, they pull the car over and arrest the men on the spot. Meanwhile, investigators have coordinated with law enforcement in Texas to arrest Garcia, who they find is in the U.S. on this particular day. Authorities put Ramirez in one car and Soto in another. But somehow Soto manages to wiggle out of his handcuffs, get out of the car, and take off on foot. Hey, where you go? It's the last time he's reportedly seen in the Wayne County area. Not long ago, authorities received word that Soto had been spotted in the Mexican state of Michoacan. Soto is an Hispanic male, five feet tall, about 140 pounds, who goes by the nickname Chino. But he's known to use several aliases, including Fernando Arana and Aaron Ariano, with various spellings of both of those names. If you have any information regarding the whereabouts of Alex Soto, call us right now, toll free at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. Coming up, one of the most horrifying massacres in North Carolina history. And this sketch is the best hope for solving the case. More NC Wanted is straight ahead. Welcome back to NC Wanted. On the evening of June 6, 1993 in Bertie County, the quiet community of Windsor was forever changed. That night, six employees were terrorized inside the Belo grocery store. Three of the victims were murdered, and the survivors have had to live with this memory for more than 14 years. All six gather and brace for the gunman's orders. He had the manager to tape up each of the other five. And then he taped up the manager. Had them all to lie on the floor. Had them to arrange themselves in three sets of twos. Once the six are bound, the gunman tells them a story about his hard times. He's had a drug deal to go bad. Sorry. He was very calm, never raised his voice, never got excited, never acted angry. Told them that he had lost his job as a result of a drug deal that had gone bad. Then the unthinkable. He commented, I hope God will forgive me for what I'm about to do. Using just three bullets, he fires once into each of the three piles, killing each victim unfortunate to be on top. One bullet travels through the body of cashier Joyce Coburn, 
and pierces Tony Welch lying beneath her. After firing the first three shots, he fired a fourth shot. Oh, either the gun malfunctioned or he was out of bullets or something happened with, with the gun. Then an already bizarre scene takes another twist as the killer rolls his victims into a straight row of six. He then looked at what we call victim number six and said, I'm going to let you live. You'll be a hero. After his shooting spree, the below suspect fled the store, leaving three dead, two victims badly injured, and one unharmed. Investigators have resubmitted DNA evidence to the SBI lab, and federal agents who work the case say it's likely that someone so violent has committed other crimes. There's a $30,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the below murder suspect. Based on eyewitness accounts, the suspect is described as a black male with medium complexion. He's between 30 and 35 years old with a slender build. At the time, he had a military-style haircut. He has light brown eyes and a narrow nose bridge, which could be the result of a sports injury. If you have any information about this case, call us at 1-866-43-WANTED or log on to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. You don't have to reveal your identity. Now, a career criminal who is accused of holding a pawn shop clerk at gunpoint, making him take off his clothes while he and an accomplice took cash and jewelry to their getaway car. May 27, 2006. It's closing time at the Cash Pawn America off Wilkinson Boulevard in Charlotte. The unsuspecting clerk walks outside for a smoke. At that moment, Jarrell Lamar Davis and another masked gunman drive to the back of the store and proceed in a calculated way. They ambush the clerk and force him back inside. Pistols drawn, Davis and the accomplice move their victim to the back of the store and order him to remove his clothes. Investigators believe it's to keep the man submissive and under control. The accomplice keeps watch as Davis takes just minutes to stuff his orange and black duffel bag with cash and jewelry and make repeated trips back and forth from the car. At one point, Davis thinks he's out of sight of the security cameras and removes the ski mask from his face. But his accomplice never makes that mistake. It isn't long before the accomplice gets a signal from Davis. Then, with a pile of cash and jewelry, the two escape in a white four-door Lincoln Town car. This is their last known sighting in the Charlotte area. Authorities say Davis's rap sheet is so extensive, he's likely involved in criminal activity wherever he is. His last known address is Evening Side Drive in Charlotte. But authorities believe he could be hiding out with family in Chapel Hill. He's also been traced to Atlanta and Florida. Authorities say they think they know the identity of his accomplice, but their target is Jarrell Lamar Davis. Davis is six feet tall, weighing about 200 pounds. He may be using several aliases, including Jeffrey LaRon Davis, James Lamar Davis, Jarrell Massey, and J.D. Davis. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Jarrell Lamar Davis, call us right now, toll free, at 1-866-43-WANTED, or go to ncwanted.com. Coming up, a petty argument turns into a deadly showdown near the Lee County line. And a businessman in Lillington posts bond for his brother accused of child rape. But the brother takes off and the businessman dodges the hefty bond. Target 20 fugitives Willard Eugene Smith and James Marvin Johnson are next. Welcome back to NC Wanted. He's avoided arrest on murder charges for more than 12 years. Authorities say Willard Eugene Smith was just a teenager when he shot and killed a man. This photo was taken around the time of the murder and is the only picture authorities have. June 16, 1995. It's summertime near the Chatham County line. And 16-year-old Willard Eugene Smith and some friends are cruising the hot afternoon looking for trouble. You got some money on you? I ain't got no money, man. The driver decides it's time to collect on a $20 debt. He proceeds to the East Forest Oaks neighborhood in the Haywood section of Moncure. 
As they make their approach, Willard Smith and his buddy spot the guy who owes the driver his money. My man, C. Yo, partner, don't you owe me some money? You mean I'm going out to get it? What? Uh, get, 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 I mean. Hey, partner. As he walks away to get the money, Willard Smith begins arguing with one of the other men standing near the Burgundy Buick. While this is happening, 22-year-old Rodney Cotton gets in the back seat and stays out of the fight. No, man. Nah, man. Nah, man. Soon, Willard goes ballistic and grabs a gun from one of his friends. And the two unleash a hail of gunfire. Willard hits the car several times and shoots out the rear windshield. Tragically, the young man sitting in the back seat is hit in the head by one of Willard's bullets. The victim, Rodney Keith Cotton, is pronounced dead at the scene. His accused killer, Willard Eugene Smith, avoids arrest and has eluded authorities for more than a decade. Authorities say Smith was going by the nickname Pootie and was living on Breezewood Road in the East Forest Oaks neighborhood near the Lee Chatham County line. His mother and brother may still be living there. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Willard Eugene Smith, call our hotline toll free at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. This next fugitive is an avid hunter who's accused of preying on children. James Marvin Johnson of Moore County is wanted for 10 counts of first degree rape, five counts of indecent liberties with a child and one count of statutory rape. To make matters worse, his heinous crimes were committed against his stepchildren. It's the summer of 1998. James Marvin Johnson relishes his country lifestyle in Moore County. He burns the hours off-roading in his ATV. He also works on sharpening his aim for hunting season. During the summer of 98 and the months that follow, Johnson gains repeated access to two adolescent girls who happen to be part of his family. It's a temptation he won't ignore. For months, Johnson takes liberties with the girls at different times and in different ways. Investigators say he repeatedly rapes and eventually impregnates the older girl, a mere 12 years old. DNA taken from the girl's fetus later confirms a perfect match to Johnson. But before his deeds are exposed, Johnson somehow manages to start a quasi-civic organization in the Sanford area called Clean Teens. This gives him cover to gain access to more young girls, whom he takes camping and photographs while in their tents. Johnson captures photos of himself with his arms around the young girls and later shares those photos with buddies, describing the children as his latest girlfriend. Police arrested Johnson on January 22nd of 1999, but family members helped him post bond. Then one month later, police got him again. This time the bond was set much higher, nearly a quarter of a million dollars, and Johnson's brother put up his business property as collateral. But despite public warnings from the victim's mother, Johnson took off for good. Tonight, you can make sure James Marvin Johnson's hunting days are over. Johnson is 5 feet 11 inches tall and heavy, weighing nearly 270 pounds. He has a tattoo of a feather with a drop of blood on his lower left leg. The letters LTTE are tattooed on his upper left arm. The phrase Widowmaker is tattooed on his right shoulder. On his back, the tattoo of an Indian displaying the words Indian Outlaw. Ironically, at the time of these crimes, his address in Cameron, North Carolina was listed as Outlaw Lane. It's time to bring this true life outlaw to justice. If you know the whereabouts of James Marvin Johnson, call us toll free at 1-866-43-WANTED or log on to our website at ncwanted.com. Welcome back to NC Wanted. Time now to recap tonight's cases. Authorities in Halifax County say Henry Artez Richardson settled an argument with a gun. Henry Richardson is described as 5'10", weighing about 180 pounds. Investigators say it's possible he could be hiding out in the Raleigh-Durham area, but most of his family lives in Halifax and Northampton counties. Richardson goes by the names Tez and Henrock and has tattoos on both arms. On his right arm, he has a cross and gravestones. On his left arm, a picture of a pit bull and the word Silas, along with the letters ROC. Next, he's a Mexican native who was part of a large-scale drug cartel and managed to escape police custody during a drug roundup in the Wayne County area in 2004. Alex Soto is an Hispanic male who stands five feet tall, weighing about 140 pounds. He goes by the nickname Chino, but has a number of aliases, including Fernando Arana and Aaron Ariano. Authorities think Soto could be hiding out in Goldsboro, Mount Olive, or Mexico. 
It's been 14 years since the Velo murders in Windsor, North Carolina, yet the person responsible for killing three innocent people remains at large. A $30,000 reward is offered for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the Velo killer. The Velo suspect is described as a black male with medium complexion, between 30 and 35 years old with a slender build. At the time of the crime, he had a military-style haircut. He has light brown eyes and a narrow nose bridge, which could be the result of a sports injury. Jarrell Lamar Davis is the accused pawn shop robber who held a man at gunpoint. Then he and an accomplice took off with a large amount of jewelry and cash. Jarrell Lamar Davis is wanted by the Charlotte Mecklenburg police for robbery with a dangerous weapon and second degree kidnapping. He's six feet tall, weighs about 200 pounds, and could be using the names Jeffrey LaRon Davis, James Lamar Davis, Jarrell Massey, or J.D. Davis. He was only 16 when authorities say he shot and killed a man, but now Willard Eugene Smith is 28 and still on the run. Authorities say Willard Eugene Smith goes by the nickname Pootie and has family living in the Lee County area. They say he may have changed his appearance. This is an age progression photo to give you an idea of what Smith may look like today. Next, he's an avid hunter who authorities say raped and impregnated his own 12-year-old stepdaughter and molested her 10-year-old sister. James Marvin Johnson was living on Outlaw Lane in Cameron, North Carolina before he took off. James Marvin Johnson is 5'11 and heavy, weighing nearly 270 pounds. He has a tattoo of a feather with a drop of blood on his lower left leg. The letters LTTE tattooed on his upper left arm. The phrase Widowmaker tattooed on his right shoulder. On his back, a tattoo of an Indian displaying the words Indian Outlaw. If you have any information on tonight's cases, call us right now toll free at 1-866-43-WANTED or log on to our website at ncwanted.com. As always, you can remain anonymous. No tip is insignificant. Do the right thing. Make that call. Join us next week as we profile more unsolved cases and wanted fugitives. Remember, together we can fight to protect the quality of life we hold dear in North Carolina. I'm Gerald Owens. Thanks for watching.